My grandfather told me a story. And the story that he told me about Tauiwi, that is the old ancient term that we gave to the newcomer. He told me an ancient story about Taruaitu. And Taruaitu is that they were they were destructive people. They were evil people. They were bad people with no conscience, no understanding of life, no understanding of spirit. They had one thing on their mind and that was to conquer all things, great and small, animals, humans, the land included. And the story that he told me made me laugh. The story that he told me. The great explorer who discovered New Zealand. When he arrived in our bay, he met an ancestor of ours. And our people, they looked after him because our people are full of manaki. Manaki is a concept that our people have maintained for thousands of years. And that is to be kind, generous and gracious as a host. And so our people cleaned his boat of barnacles, cured all his sailors of scurvy, cured them of sore throats, sore eyes, broken limbs, fed them, we filled their whole entire ship with provisions so that they would have more than one year's worth of provisions on board their boat. And in return, Captain Cook, or Cook as we like to call him, in return he gave my ancestor three gifts. The first gift was a gun, the second gift was a keg of gunpowder, and the third gift was a ball of lead. And when my ancestor was shown how to fire a gun, his instant reaction was to reach out, grab it, and throw it down and break it on the ground. And he said, he he ha ha tawana te patu. No one should ever possess the ability of this weapon. No one should ever have such a thing. Hence the reason why he broke it. Captain Cook by then had sailed out of our bay. With the ball of, uh, with, the, with the keg of gunpowder, they thought it was food. And so they ate the gunpowder. And people died and people got sick. And then they decided, well, then if it can't be eaten, it must be a seed. So they created their own soils. They built the land up. The reason why they build the land up in our culture is because to dig the land, to dig the earth, is to stab your mother. You would not do that to your own mother, so why would you do it to the earth? These are the ancient ways in which our people lived upon the earth as guardians and protectors of the earth. And so they built lots of sand using biochars and sand from the beach and different types of ingredients like seaweed and that. And they worked hard for three months to prepare the garden. And then they went to plant the gunpowder. They looked after it, they tended it every day, they watered it every day, yet nothing grew. And so in their disappointment, they turned to the ball of lead because they liked how it shone, how it glowed. And they had never seen anything like that apart from the stars in the sky. And then they figured out that the lead could easily be manipulated. And so they manipulated the lead and they made an axe, or what we call a tuki, which is a very old tool, ancient tool, stone tool. And they carved a very long, beautiful handle for this gleaming axe. And they went down to the beach to find a suitable piece of driftwood. Suitable piece of driftwood to build an ocean-going vessel. They found the log on the beach. And when the recitals and the rituals had been finished, 
They went and started to remove the inside core. However, as they struck the wood, the lead bent. Why? Because lead is soft. Now people did not understand that. And so in the old world, there was only one way to make things hard. So they lit a fire and they dropped it on the fire and it melted. And everyone sitting around that fire reached in and tried to pull out the bits before they melted. And everyone sitting on that fire were burnt from the lead. It burnt right to the bone. And then it was from that day onwards that our people realized that these newcomers, these newcomers to this land, brought nothing but death, disease and destruction. And so I think to myself, when I think of that story, and I think of the world that we've created, I think of that story, the world we've created, one of death, destruction, disease, imprisonment. You know? And for me, the ecoversities is an opportunity for us to try and try and recalibrate the systems that have been in place for 2,000 years and trying to create a new future. Why? Because there's not, there's not much that remains. And so this is an, this is an excellent opportunity for people such as us to create a new pathway, a new pathway of discovery, a new way to see the world, a new way to understand, a new way to walk in the light. As my old people would say, me haere ma raro i roto i te māra ma tanga kia tauri a atu kia puta nei ki waho ki te rao. Tread carefully in this world, walk in the world of light and admire and appreciate the sacred gifts that have been given. And I think the ecoversities are on that pathway, on that pathway to educate people about those things that are most precious to us. And if we do it with a combined effort of our spirits, our God-like energy, our God-like power that was gifted to us from the dawn of creation, we have the ability to change the world.